Here is Deus Ex. <clears throat> I'm gonna let the intro, well, the title sequence play just because the theme music is so terrific. There's that, one of my favorite theme songs. We'll start off with training. Well, hold on, my screen size is very funky. I didn't really notice on the title screen. Let me play with the graphic settings right quick. I think the issue is the resolution. Let's try it. Well, that's... That looks good, but let's... Try cranking it even a little higher. That's even better. That's what we're gonna go with. Excellent. You'll already notice that this doesn't have the interruptions Thief 3 did, and thank goodness for that. This was the first game I ever played with real-time reflections. They don't look nearly as good now, but they were awesome back when the game came out. Let's move forward a little. I figured you'd be sick of drills by now. Hopefully our training exercises will be more interesting than what they've had you doing at the academy. <clears throat> I'm not going to do any big, complex set of rules like I did when I ghosted the Thief games, mostly because stealth doesn't work nearly as well in this game, or really any other games I've thought of. I'm just going to do a completionist, non-lethal walkthrough of Deus Ex. The only kill we're going to make will be Anna Navara. There's even a way around that, but it relies on glitches. The idea is that she's the only person you have to kill, so we'll kill her, but no one else. Let's move on. Open the door by clicking the right mouse button. The right button uses items in the world. I pity you if you've never played this game. It is one of the greatest games of all time, bar none. It, there are many, many things that it does even better than the Thief series. It's just... I can't really describe why I like Thief better. I just do. It's a matter of taste. But this is a very, very, very close number two for me. Just absolutely one of the best. If you've never played it, get it now. The key on the desk opens encryption-based nanotech locks. When you pick it up, it will automatically be added to your key ring. Use the key ring to unlock the door and proceed to the next area. 
Now you see a couple of people watching us up there. There's uh, the middle guy is the one who's been talking to us, Jaime Reyes. We don't know the guy on the left yet, but you will later, I promise. So we'll pick up the key. Our nano key ring is automatically on our tool belt as number zero, so we'll use it to unlock the door. You're going to get a lot of equipment during these exercises. Press F1 at any time to access the inventory screen, which will let you add and remove items from the tool belt. Press F2 to view your current goals and any notes you may decide to take. On a typical mission, a UNATCO agent's objectives are logged electronically so that he can stay on task at all times. So, hit F1 to see the inventory. It's empty right now. We have 500 credits. I'll go ahead and take you through the menus right quick. Next over is health. This game has locational damage. You can lose your limbs, which have ver has varying effects on you. They each have 100 health right now. The only way you die is if you lose either your head or your torso. Augmentations. Right now, we just have the IFF. Here, I'll, I'll read all these descriptions to you. Nano key ring. Nano keys available. Trainer door. A nano key ring can read and store the two-dimensional molecular patterns from different nano keys and then recreate those patterns on demand. This game has so much flavor text. Way, way more than Thief, but it's awesome. If I click on ammo, we see that there's no ammo available. Pretty straightforward, so... We have flavor text for each body part. Head. Head wounds are fatal in the vast majority of threat scenarios. However, in those cases where death is not instantaneous, agents will often find that head injuries impair vision and aim. Care should be taken to heal such injuries as quickly as possible or death may result. Light wounds, slightly decreased accuracy. Medium wounds, wavering vision. Heavy wounds, death. Torso. The torso is by far the portion of the human anatomy able to absorb the most damage, but it is also the easiest to target in close quarters combat. As progressively more damage is inflicted to the torso, agents may find their movements impaired and eventually bleed to death, even if a mortal blow to a vital organ is not suffered. Light wounds, slightly impaired movement. Medium wounds, significantly impaired movement. Major wounds, death. Let's see... Left arm. Obviously, damage to the arm is of concern in any combat situation as it has a direct effect on the agent's ability to utilize a variety of weapons. Losing the use of one arm will certainly lower the agent's combat efficiency, while the loss of both arms will render it nearly impossible for an agent to present even a nominal threat to most hostiles. Light wounds, slightly decreased accuracy. Medium wounds, moderately decreased accuracy. Major wounds, significantly decreased accuracy. Right arm says the same thing. Left leg. Injuries to the leg will result in drastically diminished mobility. If an agent in hostile territory is unfortunate enough to lose the use of both legs but still otherwise remain viable, but still remain otherwise viable, they are ordered to execute UNATCO Special Operations Order 99009, self-termination. Light wounds, slightly impaired movement. Medium wounds, moderately impaired movement. Heavy wounds, significantly impaired movement. And right leg says the same thing. Once we have med pack, med kits, we can use them. To heal a specific region of the body, click on the region, then click the heal button. Let's go back to the inventory, just make sure there's nothing I've neglected to read. Okay, let's move on to augs. When we have upgrade canisters, which we have none of right now, to upgrade an augmentation, click on the augmentation you wish to upgrade, then on the upgrade button. We also have no bio cells, but to replenish bioelectric energy for your augmentations, click on the use cell button. Right now our bioelectric energy is at 100%. We have none of the optional augmentations yet, and there's no flavor text for these regions either. But let's look at what we do have, our default augmentations, there are three. IFF, automatic friend or foe identification uses advanced heuristic algorithms to associate visible objects with known threat categories. Targeting reticle highlights red over enemies and green over allies and neutrals. No upgrades. Energy rate, zero units per minute. Current level one, maximum, always active. Light. Uh, by default, the F12 key turns on your light. 
Bioluminescent cells within the retina provide coherent illumination of the agent's field of view. No upgrades, energy rate 10 units per minute, current level 1, maximum. Finally, the info link. One-way microtransceiver array allows agents in the field to receive messages from control and to store and later retrieve relevant maps, conversations, and notes. Unatco Ops File Note JR133 Violet. This is top of the line all the way, so don't expect any upgrades. Jaime Reyes, end note. No upgrades. Energy rate 0 units per minute. Current level 1, maximum. Always active. Let's look at the skills. I'll talk about the skills later, actually, when it comes time to... So, well, no, I'll do it now. As you can see, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 skills. As we progress through the game, we'll gain skill points, which are sort of the equivalent of experience points, and we can choose what to upgrade. So you have four different skill levels. They are untrained, trained, advanced, and master. To start off with, we're trained in weapons pistol and untrained in everything else. Um, you can upgrade them at any time if you have the points, and it tells you the points needed to upgrade in the right-hand column. So let's go through them. Weapons heavy. The use of heavy weaponry, including flamethrowers, laws, and the experimental plasma and gep guns. Untrained. An agent can use heavy weaponry, but their accuracy is low and movement is difficult. Trained. Accuracy and damage increases slightly while reloading and movement is somewhat faster. Advanced. Accuracy and damage increases moderately while reloading and movement is even more rapid. Master. An agent is a walking tank when equipped with heavy weaponry. I'll just tell you right now, upgrading heavy weapons is useless and I'm not gonna do it. Weapons Pistol. The use of handheld weapons, including the standard 10mm pistol, its stealth variant, and the mini crossbow. Untrained, an agent can use pistols. Trained, accuracy and damage increases slightly while reloading is faster. Advanced, accuracy and damage increases moderately while reloading is even more rapid. Master, an agent is lethally precise with pistols. Pistol is worth upgrading because it includes the mini crossbow with its tranquilizer darts, which are one of the main weapons you will use in a, a non-lethal playthrough. So, we'll be upgrading pistol, although eventually, but it's pretty low priority. There are things that we need to upgrade first, and it starts off trained, which is a bonus. Weapons Rifle. The use of rifles, including assault rifles, sniper rifles, and shotguns. Untrained, an agent can use rifles. Trained. Accuracy and damage increases slightly while reloading is faster. Advanced. Accuracy and damage increases moderately while reloading is even more rapid. Master. An agent can take down a target a mile away with one shot. I will say that if you're not going non-lethal, rifle is one of the most useful skills to upgrade. If you are going non-lethal, rifle is useless and I won't touch it. Weapons Low Tech. The use of melee weapons such as knives, throwing knives, swords, pepper guns, and prods. Untrained, an agent can use melee weaponry. Trained. Accuracy, damage, and rate of attack all increase slightly. Advanced. Accuracy, damage, and rate of attack all increase moderately. Master. An agent can render most opponents unconscious or dead with a single blow. Weapons low tech is actually your primary weapon skill if you're playing non-lethal. It's more important than pistol, the reason being that if you trank someone, they still run around for a while before they drop unconscious. Whereas with low tech, much like the blackjack in Thief, if you upgrade it and whack someone from behind with the baton, they'll almost always go down instantly unconscious, which is what we end up wanting. So we'll eventually raise low tech all the way to master, but again, like the we other weapon skills, it's not a high priority. Weapons Demolition. The use of thrown explosive devices including lambs, gas grenades, EMP grenades, and even electronic scramble grenades. Untrained. An agent can throw grenades, attach them to a surface as a proximity device, or attempt to disarm and remove a previously armed proximity device. Trained. Grenade accuracy and damage increases slightly, as does the safety margin for disarming proximity devices. Advanced. Grenade accuracy and damage increases moderately, as does the safety margin for disarming proximity devices. Master. An agent is an expert at all forms of demolition. Raising this skill is useless. You can do everything you need to do with explosives without training it at all. Environmental training. Experience with using hazmat suits, ballistic armor, thermoptic camo, and rebreathers in a number of dangerous situations. Untrained. An agent can use hazmat suits, ballistic armor, thermoptic camo, and rebreathers. Trained. 
armor suits, camo, and rebreathers can be used slightly longer and more efficiently. Advanced. Armor suits, camo, and rebreathers can be used moderately longer and more efficiently. Master. An agent wears suits and armor like a second skin. Another completely useless skill. All it does is make suits last longer and you never need them to last that long. Lock picking. Lock picking is as much art as skill, but with intense study it can be mastered by any agent with patience and a set of lock picks. Untrained, an agent can pick locks. Trained, the efficiency with which an agent picks locks increases slightly. Advanced, the efficiency with which an agent picks locks increases moderately. Master, an agent can defeat almost any mechanical lock. This is one of the big ones that eats up a load of skill points, but you absolutely must raise it. This is one of the three... This is one of the two top priority skills, along with its companion, electronics. By studying electronics and its practical application, agents can more efficiently bypass a number of security systems using multi-tools. Untrained, an agent can bypass security systems. Trained, the efficiency with which the efficiency with which an agent bypasses security increases slightly. Advanced. The efficiency with which an agent bypasses security increases moderately. Master, an agent encounters almost no security systems of any challenge. Paired with lockpicking, these are the two top priority skills we need to raise. They determine our access to many of the paths through the game. They're absolutely vital, vital for any playthrough, really. Next is medicine. Practical knowledge of human physiology can be applied by an agent in the field, allowing more efficient use of medkits. Untrained, an agent can use medkits. Trained, an agent can heal slightly more damage and reduce the period of toxic poisoning. Advanced, an agent can heal moderately more damage and further reduce the period of toxic poisoning. Master, an agent can perform a heart bypass with household materials. Raising medicine is pretty useless, because you shouldn't be taking that much damage. All it does is make medkits heal more. I do most of my healing with med bots anyway if I need any at all. Let's move on to computer. The covert manipulation of computers and security consoles. Untrained, an agent can use terminals to read bulletins and news. Trained, an agent can hack ATMs, computers, and security consoles. Advanced, an agent achieves a moderate increase in detection countdowns and a moderate decrease in lockout times, as well as gaining the ability to control automated gun turrets. Master, an agent is an elite hacker that few systems can withstand. Computer is definitely worth raising. It's not as high priority as lock picking or electronics. You absolutely have to at least train it, and then you'll want to raise it to advanced too. It's ahead of the weapon skills for me in terms of importance, but beneath lock picking and electronics. The final skill is swimming. Underwater operations require their own unique set of skills that must be developed by an agent with extreme physical dedication. Untrained, an agent can swim normally. Trained, the swimming speed and lung capacity of an agent increases slightly. Advanced, the swimming speed and lung capacity of an agent increases moderately. Master, an agent moves like a dolphin underwater. Raising swimming is pretty useless. You can just use rebreathers anytime you need to swim a long way. So. With all the skills covered, let's move on to goals and notes. Right now we have no primary goals, no secondary goals, and no notes. Pretty straightforward. Worth noting though that you can add, write your own note at any time. Let's move on to conversations. Here it will show you a transcript of every message you have received through your Invo link throughout the course of the game. If we look at images, we have none so far. And if we look at our logs, it shows the little messages that pop up at the top. So things like trainer door added to nano key ring, your nano key ring unlocked it. That's it for our menu right now. I'll tell you everything else as it pops up. Let me discuss the HUD right quick. The tool belt there in the lower right, pretty straightforward. Once we have items, we can just drag them down to the tool belt to assign them to slots. Upper left shows your body. Uh, green is good, red is bad, empty means it's crippled. Your bioelectric energy is the left bar to the right. There's a built-in compass, which is nice. The upper right shows your augmentations, which you can activate. Right now, all we have is the light. So, after that, we're ready to move on. Now pick up a weapon and try to break open those crates. One of them's indestructible, but the others contain things you might find useful. Everything in this game has flavor text, so I'll be doing a lot of reading early on while we're picking up new things. So I'm gonna grab both the crowbar and the n combat knife, and I'll show them to you. 
Crowbar, weapon stats. Ammo type, not applicable. Base damage, six. Clip size, rate of fire, reload time, all NA. Recoil, 0.0. .0. Base accuracy, 50%. Accurate range, maximum range, NA. Mass, 15 pounds. Laser sight, scope, silencer, all NA. Governed by the skill, weapons, low tech. A crowbar, hit someone or something with it. Repeat. Unatco Ops file note, GH010 blue. Many crowbars we call murder of crowbars. Always have one for combat. Ha! Gunther Herman, end note. And then the combat knife. Ammo types NA, base damage 5, clip size, rate of fire, reload time NA, recoil 0%, base accuracy 50, re recoil 0.0. .0. Base accuracy 50%, accurate range, max range, NA, mass 10 pounds, laser sight, scope, silencer, all NA, skill, weapons, low tech, an ultra high carbon stainless steel knife. Pretty straightforward. The crowbar has higher base damage, but it takes up two inventory slots while the knife only takes up one. That's worth noting. Let's break open these crates now. General supply crate, metal crate. The metal crate is indestructible. Now pick up the lockpick and use it to open the door. Lockpicking takes time and expends the self-assembling resources of modern lockpicks. Just be patient and remember your training. At higher skill levels, you won't need as much time or lockpick resources to pick a lock. So we'll pick up both the lockpicks. Their flavor is as follows. A disposable lockpick. The tension wrench is steel, but appropriate needles are formed from fast congealing polymers. Unatco Ops file note AJ006-black. Here's what they don't tell you. Despite the product literature, you can use a standard lockpick to bypass all but the most high-class nanolocks. Alex Jacobson, end note. I should mention right now... Well, hold on. Doors have two strength values. The door strength tells you how much damage a door takes before being destroyed. The lock strength tells you how many lockpicks will be required to pick the lock. Some doors have an infinite strength and an infinite lock strength. That means you have to find a key. So this door's lock strength is only 5%. It takes one pick. There's one thing worth noting right now. I'm not going to use it, but there's a glitch in that's still in this game where if you start a lockpick and then jump into your inventory screen, despite how much lockpicking you're supposed to be able to do, at untrained it's 10%, at trained it's 25, at advanced it's 40, and at master it's 55, if you jump into the inventory while JC is picking the lock and you wait long enough, he'll unlock any door, regardless of your skill level, so theoretically you never need to raise lockpick. I'm not going to do that, it's obviously cheating, but it's there if you want it. So we're untrained right now, but 5% is still low enough to only take one pick. So we've picked the lock, we still have one lockpick left. code to the door has been stored in that data cube. Right click on the data cube to read the contents, then type the code into the keypad. You activate the keypad with the right mouse button, just like you activate a data cube or any object in the world. So we right click the data cube. We'll make this one easy for you. To open the door, use the code 0012. Got it? Jaime. Now that, uh, goes into our notes. By the way, just to clarify, when I say Jaime, I am not uh, engaged in slurs against the Jewish people. That's how they pronounce the J-A-I-M-E name in this game. Just wanted to make sure that was clear. One of the coolest things about this game is just you can interact with everything. I can pick up and throw this house plant, move up to the keypad, the bypass strength is 20%. I could do it with two multi-tools, but I know the key code. And one of the coolest, most immersive things about this game, which to my I had never encountered before I played it, is simple but awesome. You don't have to use the mouse. You can actually just type the numbers into your keyboard. 0012. That opens her up. Use the disposable multi-tools on the table to hack the keypad up ahead. A multi-tool's resources are finite. When a tool is depleted, it becomes useless. The manual describes other uses for the multi-tool. 
At higher skill levels, you'll need less time and multi-tool resources to hack a given device. So there are three multi-tools on the table. I'll pick them all up. Let's read their flavor. A disposable electronics tool by using electromagnetic resonance detection and frequency modulation to dynamically alter the flow of current through a circuit, skilled agents can use the multi-tool to manipulate code locks, cameras, auto gun turrets, alarms, or other security systems. So if I read the book, UNATCO Training Manual, Section 3C, Multi-Tools. A multi-tool is not really a tool at all, not in the usual sense of the word, but a disposable electronic device that utilizes electromagnetic resonance detection and frequency modulation to dynamically alter the flow of current through almost any non-hardened circuitry. Skilled agents can use the multi-tool to manipulate code locks, cameras, autogun turrets, alarms, or other security elements. Note that multi-tools cannot be used for computer information extraction. See Section 5A hacking. Now if I look at the data cube, I'm almost done but one quick note. I'm not exactly the expert on this sort of thing. For that you'll have to check in with Sam Carter when you get to Liberty Island, but remember that there's any number of other ways to open a door including using explosives or finding a security computer. Hi me. Very well, let's go up here then. So we see the security keypad's bypass strength is 5%, even untrained we only need one tool. That opens it right up, and here we have I'm this here guy. Pick up all munitions and equipment. Thanks for the cooperation, Agent. You can cheat your way past that too if you throw your items down the hall and you walk past done him. Yet. I like to let everybody say everything they're going to say. He can usually trigger another remark by walking Handing away. your equipment. That's right. No cheating. But we can't actually talk to him. Got you running the course, huh? Don't sweat it. Everybody has to do it once, even the special agents. There's so much content in this game. And that's what's, uh, the completionist aspect is what's lacking. Carry on the training, agent. I'm just here to take care of your gear. Is what's missing in most of the playthroughs I've seen so far, so that's what I hope to contribute. Because they're unlike Thief, where there are so far so good. Very few playthroughs to be seen. There are plenty of Deus Ex playthroughs. This game is much more well known and popular. But like I said, I hope to make my own small this contribution. This a bitch, isn't it? Last time I did it, man, I sprained my ankle on the jumping part. They should get rid of crazy stuff like that. Someone will break their neck. So I talk to, I'll talk to everyone until they start repeating themselves. That's the way to know you've heard everything. So far, so good. Okay. Lying in front of you is a brave cadet who volunteered to be rendered unconscious for this next training exercise. Highlight and search him to find the key to the medical room. Afterward, pick up his body and place it on the medical table so that one of my aides can revive him once the exercise is over. So, we've medical room added to Nano Key Ring. So we'll unlock it. Pick the homes up. You found a body. And drop him on the table. Good work. I'll get someone down there immediately to revive Private Winslow. Move on to the next area. You can bet this won't be the last time we send you into a dark room. Turn on your light augmentation and find the exit on the other side. Just press F12 by default. So there's a light switch over on the other side you can hit and then turn off your augmentation. You're not a mech. But you're enough of a machine to need repair buffs now and then. If you used up some bioelectric energy getting through the dark area, for example, this contraption can charge you back up. Repair bot interface. The repair bot can restore up to 75 points of bioelectric energy every 60 seconds. The repair bot is ready, you may now recharge. Let's do it.
Congratulations, you completed phase one. Move over the ramp into the next rooms to begin learning movement skills. We'll be watching you through the cameras, like the one you can see up in the corner. In the field, remember that terrorists sometimes use cameras like this in their security grids to set off alarms and alert guards to your location. So there's the camera. Learn what they look like. Jump across the platforms. You'll have to crouch to get under those pipes. If you fall, use these stairs to begin again. I prefer to set crouch to a toggle. That's just me. You need to go through the door up ahead, but it's blocked. Those wooden crates are too big to jump and too heavy to lift, so use the metal crates near the wall to build steps. To pick up a crate, walk up to it so that it highlights, then click the right mouse button. To drop something you're holding, you can press the tab key by default. So this metal crate is too heavy to lift without an augmentation, but we can pick up the small one. So just set it right here and use it to hop up. Now go up the ladder at the other end of the room. By default, you look up and use the arrow keys to climb. I'm having a little trouble adjusting the quick saving and quick loading in this game because you can't use the F keys, they're all eventually assigned to augmentations. So I'm going with their default equivalents on the numpad, but that takes some time to get used to. We get some complaints about this swimming obstacle because the water's contaminated. Recruits forget to grab the hazmat suit and end up in my office. Not pretty. Or they forget that they have to put the suit on by selecting it and pressing the left mouse button. Remember that the hazmat is disposable. You can wear it only once, and it operates only for a fixed duration. Use the ramp on the other side of the pool to climb out. So I'll grab the hazmat suit. Its flavor says the following. A standard hazardous material suit that protects against a full range of environmental hazards including radiation, fire, biochemical toxins, electricity, and EMP. Hazmat suits contain an integrated bacterial oxygen scrubber that degrades over time and thus should not be reused. So, get it out and left click to start it and then swim through the water. As you can see, it absorbs 25% of the radiation when we're untrained with environmental training, which is plenty. These medical books, normally used for quick healing, are of particular interest to you, JC, because you need a bot's help to install new augmentations. If you took any damage during this win, now's a good time to get patched up. So, the med bot will heal up to 300 units, which are distributed evenly among your damaged body regions. The med bot is ready, you may now be healed. Boom. We have no augmentations available to install. Hazmat power supply used up. Let's move on. Gotta start the next section without arms or tools. Rules are rules. I think this guy has a different uh, set of statements than the other one, so let's wait and this see. This thing's a bitch, isn't it? Oh, nope. Last time I did it, man, I... Welcome to the combat training area. I am Gunther Herman, and I will be monitoring your progress here. We will start with weapon familiarization. Your first exercise will be to learn a little about aiming and targeting. Step up to the shooting range to the west. The targets are released by using the buttons on the counter. Release the first target and take a few shots with one of the pistols until it is destroyed. Notice the targeting reticle appears when you aim at a target. So I'm gonna pick up everything. And let's look at our flavor. Pistol, weapon stats. Ammo, 10 millimeter ammo, 60 rounds. Ammo loaded, 10 millimeter ammo. Ammo types, 10 millimeter ammo. 
Base damage, 14, plus 10%, that's from having pistols trained, equals 15. Clip size, 6 rounds, rate of fire, single, 1.6 rounds per second. Reload time, 2.0 seconds, recoil, 0 0.30. Base accuracy, 65%, plus 5% equals 70%. Again, that's from having pistols trained. Accurate range, 150 feet. Max range, 300 feet. Mass, 10 pounds. Laser sight, no. Scope, no. Silencer, NA. Skill, weapons, pistol. A standard 10 millimeter pistol. When it says no versus NA, that means... Well, I'm not sure what that means. I think it means that... NA means you can't silence it, whereas NO means when we find those mods, we can install them if we wish to. 10mm ammo. With their combination of high stopping power and low recoil, pistols chambered for the 10mm round have become the sidearms of choice for paramilitary forces around the world. And the ammo description says the same thing. So we hit the switch. Wait for the target to get out, and for the sake of training, I'll just whip out my gun and start shooting like they expect me to. Good. If you hold your aim for a few seconds before firing, you will notice the reticle starts out wide and tightens as you hold. The longer you aim as a target without moving, the greater your accuracy will become. Release the second target and aim before shooting this time. Uh, reload defaults to semicolon, which is fine for me. So I'll just run around a bit to show you guys the drawdown. So there you see the reticle shrinking. When it gets all the way down there, that's as well aimed as you're gonna get. But the size of the reticle is the range in which your bullets can land. So. Good work. Now proceed to the next area. Reload again, even though we're about to lose this gun. I'm here to pick up all munitions and equipment. Thanks for the cooperation, Agent. I assume his conversational set is still identical, but we'll make sure. Yet. Yep. This is a rifle range. Here, you will learn one of the ways skill level makes a difference in your accuracy. Step up to the shooting range. The targets are released using the buttons on the counter. Release the first target and destroy it with the rifle. Use the rifle scope by pressing the left bracket key to turn the scope on. Oh, pick up everything. Let's read this. Sniper rifle, weapon stats, ammo, 30-06 ammo, 30 rounds, ammo loaded, 30-06 ammo, ammo types, 30-06 ammo, base damage, right now we're untrained, base damage 25, clip size 6 rounds, rate of fire single, 0 0.6 rounds per second, reload time 2.0 seconds, recoil 0 0.40, Base accuracy 75%, accurate range 1800 feet, maximum range 3000 feet, mass 30 pounds, laser sight no, scope yes, silencer no, skill weapons rifle. The military sniper rifle is the superior tool for the interdiction of long range targets. When coupled with the proven 30 6 round, a marksman can achieve tight groupings at better than 1 MOA minute of angle, depending on environmental conditions. 30 6 ammo. Its high velocity and accuracy have made sniper rifles using the 30-06 round the preferred tool of individuals requiring rump requiring one shot, one kill for over 50 years. Wait for the target to roll out. We'll aim. And we'll zoom in with the scope. You can see how our aim wobbles. Excellent. Now we are going to raise your skill with rifles to master level. Release the second target and destroy it. So at master, the first thing you'll notice is how much smaller the reticle is. There's no wobble whatsoever. Good fuck. As you can see, higher skills give you better range, accuracy, and effectiveness. Proceed to the next area when you are ready. There was also no recoil. Having our skill raised to master raises the base damage by 50% to 37, base accuracy by 25% to 100, and 
even though it doesn't say it did anything to the recoil, there was no recoil at all. Anyway, say goodbye to the sniper rifle. Hand in your equipment. That's right. No cheating. I'm all about certainty, so I'll wait until he says something else. Got you running the course, huh? Don't sweat okay. it. Everybody has to do it once. This is the demolitions training area. First, you will learn to use the lamb as a proximity mine. Approach the bay window and you will see a lamb placed on the target board on the black and red wall. We've got a med bot here in case of accidents, which can happen if you're not careful. Press the first button next to the window and a security bot will be released. Watch as he nears the lamb. Lambs placed on the walls are proximity triggered. Here come our only, uh, well, I guess robots don't really matter. So here comes some destruction. This time you will place your own lamb. Take a lamb from the munitions bay and proceed to the red and black wall below. I usually prefer to disable bots, much like I prefer to knock people out, but we have no choice in training. So... As usual, I'll pick up everything. Let's read about lambs. Lightweight attack munitions, lamb, weapon stats, ammo types, NA, base damage, 50, clip size, rate of fire, reload time, all NA, recoil, 0.0, .0 base accuracy, 50%, accurate range, maximum range, NA, mass, 5 pounds, laser sight, scope, silencer, NA, skill, weapons, demolition, a multifunctional explosive with electronic priming system that can either be thrown or attached to any surface with its polyhesive backing and used as a proximity mine. Unatco Ops file note SC093-Blue. Disarming a proximity device should only be attempted with the proper demolitions training. Trust me on this. Sam Carter, end note. Get as close to the wall as possible when you place the lamp. If you aren't close enough, the lamb will fall to the ground and detonate. So you see, this default manner of holding the lamb means we'll throw it. And as I turn toward the wall and move closer, you see the way the hand changed. That means we're now going to place it on the wall. Now that we've placed it, we can push the second button. Proceed to the next area for more demolitions training. You'll need a few extra lamps for the demolitions area. Here, catch! Okay, see, this guy does say something different. He gave me three more lambs. I just like to kid around. Ah, yes, his whole voice set is different. Let's hear everything he says. It's boring down here. Didn't have my boots polished. That's why they put me here. The attention to detail in this game is mind-numbing. They just make up excuses because they like to harass us. This place would run a lot smoother if they just rotate assignments instead of always making you feel like you're being punished. Bastards, I don't have to take this crap. There's lots of things I could be doing. It's much easier when you can interact with them by right-clicking, but you can't do that with guys behind windows. I had offers on Wall Street, you know. Top corporate security divisions. Corporate work's not so glamorous, but it sure pays better.
One of these days, I'm going to resign. Then they'll be sorry. Then they'll wish they treated the troops a little better. Bastards, I don't have to take okay, this Okay, he's done. There's lots of things I could be doing. Next, you will need to breach the doors in the hallway. Throw a lamb down to the end of the hall. Once it blows, proceed down the corridor. Easy enough. Notice how the wooden door was destroyed and the metal and barred doors remained. Remember this for future reference. Beyond the destroyed door, you can see a damaged piece of wall you can also breach with a lamb. Try that now. Excellent. Notice that the wall is opened. Look for other weakened walls such as this, and your lamb and other explosives will allow you to breach them. Continue through that breach and on to the next section. Gotta start the next section without arms or tools. Rules are rules. Okay, let's see if he says anything different. I doubt it, but we'll make sure. Carry on with the training, Agent. I'm just here to take care of your gear. Alright. The area beyond the door is the grenade defusing facility. Here you will learn how to remove planted explosive devices. This is an a the area where you really need to quick save because being. Oh, hold on. At each of the corners of this area, you will find a lamp planted on the wall. You must disarm and remove all four lamps before you can proceed to the next section of training. You will need to move up to the lamp quickly and to defuse it by right clicking. A second right click will remove the lamp from the wall. So this part you want to quick save. I mean, you can't die in here, but disarming explosives while untrained, while easily doable, can be rough if you mess up. These two are easy since you can just run right at them. You only get three of those clicks or beeps to disarm when you're untrained. It's telling me I already have enough of that type of ammo. Interesting. So it won't let me remove them unless I burn some lambs. All right. Yeah, it won't let me pick up more than 10. I don't know why I got 10 from picking up those two, but there it is. So now let's grab the last one. A word of warning, Agent Denton. This was a simulated experience. Real lambs will not be so forgiving. You may proceed to the next area. I'm here to pick up all munitions and equipment. Thanks for the cooperation, Agent. Let's take another pause just to make sure he says nothing new. So far, so good. All right. Oops. Stealth. that you will be able to avoid the confrontation altogether. All right. The test is simple. Get to the far north door without being spotted by the guards below. If one of them sees you, he will sound an alarm and lock the door. I'm going to mess this up on purpose just to hear all the messages and make sure I find everything in inside the stealth test. So, when we mess up, we can hit this reset button to try again, but let's see, let's find everything we can first. Tech goggles. Well, what are these? Tech goggles are used by many special ops forces throughout the world under a number of different brand names, but they all provide some sort form of portable light amplification in a disposable package. 
UNATCO Stealth Guidelines Overview Stealth is a vital component of all UNATCO operations. When implemented correctly, stealth missions result in the lowest possible ratio of agent and civilian casualties to hostile losses. Situational awareness is key, and agents should not only be familiar with the tactical opportunities offered by their immediate environment, but how those opportunities can be exploited to their advantage with the appropriate equipment. Tech goggles allow agents to operate in low-light environments such as offices or labs where illumination might otherwise attract attention. With binoculars, an agent can survey an opponent's disposition and determine the best way to evade or eliminate their defenses. A rifle or crossbow equipped with scope and silencing modifications can be used to interdict targets from a considerable distance, significantly compromising hostile resistance. Other features of the environment can also be used by an agent to enhance their ability to operate covertly or to create useful distractions. Disabling security cameras, subverting auto guns, and reprogramming bots are all viable tactics employed by experienced agents in the field. So like I said, I'm going to mess up on purpose the first time, and maybe a second time to make sure I get all the messages. Remember, don't let the guards see you. Use the crates for cover and crouch when you move. When you actually want to be stealthy, crouching is one of the simplest ways to do it. You can throw objects to distract them, just like in Thief. The reason stealth doesn't work as well is because you have no way of gauging how illuminated you are. Worth noting that you can actually bypass alarm panels in the main game. You see right now this it would take two multi-tools to do it. Let's see what else is down here, what other messages we can get. Here, we have a thermoptic camo. Integrating woven fiber optics into an advanced computing system, thermoptic camo can render an agent invisible to both humans and bots by dynamically refracting light and radar waves. However, the high power drain makes it impractical for more than short-term use, after which the circuitry is fused and it becomes useless. So, it turns you completely invisible, but it doesn't last long. Always remember the four basic tactics to avoid detection. Crouch behind concealment. Stay behind enemies. Move slowly to avoid making noise. And use shadows to conceal yourself. Be alert to every possibility. Let's hit reset. I think she'll talk to us again. This time, don't let the guards see you. Stay crouched, stay behind the crates, and stay behind the guards. So we hit reset. I think she talks to us one more time if we screw up again. Let me make sure. I know I saw somebody. Contact, I have visual. Okay, that's it. I guess I only have to mess up once, but let's see what these guys say to me. Okay, they won't talk at all. That's fine. The camo is the easiest way to actually get through, so I'm gonna do that right quick. We have movement here, sir. He just heard me. assigned us to be partners, and I will not stop to hold your hand and repeat myself when we are facing a real enemy. In terms of sneaking, uh, stealth works a lot like it does in the Thief games, it's just not nearly so well implemented. Noise works really well, but 
vision, you just, you can't tell how visible you are. That lack of feedback makes it tough. But, we'll, n nonetheless, we will do a lot of sneaking in the real game. Now for the last test. You have to find a way across the river to the exit on the other side. There's more than one way to get there, depending on your approach and the skills you want to use. It's up to you. Make use of the IFF system to identify enemies. The crosshairs will highlight red over enemies, green over allies, and white over neutrals. Pretty basic. There's one security bot in here. He's all we have to tangle with in terms of avoiding enemies. There are a few things to find in here. There's a crowbar there, which we don't need. TNT crates, explosive barrels. We're not going to mess with any of that either. If you look behind these three barrels... Hey JC, want to cross the water? Lower the bridge. The code is 0089. It's either that or get all wet. Hi me. I don't want to be seen here if I can help it. You still can't actually be killed in training, but... Over here is a 10 millimeter pistol. Okay. Well, I do want to open this crate and see what's inside. It's just a multi tool. See, it has pretty long range vision. I want to do better at that. Yes, I want to quick load. Let's actually pick up that crowbar I spotted back here. We'll open the crate with that. You'll notice that. Hard cover is implemented very well in this game. As soon as I got behind the pillar, the robot steps basically went silent for me. Right, let's get the multi-tool. Now I'm gonna wait another turn. Get in behind the bot right as it begins its journey the other direction. So I want to get across without getting nailed. Now, I don't think it can hear me. And we're across. Very good. Step up to each hologram for more info. When you're through, go out the opposite door. Alright, let's get more info. of UNATCO troopers is the central component of all UN peacekeeping occupations. The NSF, the biggest terrorist threat in the US, this national militia group thinks it is fighting the second American revolution. This page industry's walking turret, marketed to governments worldwide, is the workhorse of most national military forces. Due to the heavy armor, they take little damage from ordinary bullets. If you come up against a bot, you should use an EMP grenade. 
scrambler grenade, or some kind of explosive. An inexpensive security bot, a favorite of third world countries and corporate security divisions. Not so mobile, but don't be fooled. We've lost plenty of agents to its well-armored assault gun. Like other bots, it's difficult to damage with ordinary bullets. This is the old augmentation technology, hopefully about to be phased out. Notice the reliance on electronics and servo mechanics, a maintenance nightmare. If I had two credits for every repair manual they made me file in my office in the med lab, new nano-augmented agents are nearly indistinguishable from the general population, except that you and your brother don't know how to smile, even for a picture. One last thing to do. See this brick? Opens up a secret room. Step over to the communicator. There's someone who wants to talk to you. Manderley likes to hear which agents find this area. They're usually the ones who take terrorists by surprise in the field. Your brother Paul, for instance. All right, carry on. Don't let it go to your head. Sufficiently impressive and early success for the whole organization. Thanks. You from the United Nations? Your augmentations are a go. The real test comes next. Active duty. I'm ready, sir. Yes. Yes, you are. And that's it. Training ends when we go through this door. And we get bounced back out to the main menu, and I'm going to call that good. I'll see you next time to play the actual game. This has been Let's Play Deus Ex. Bye-bye. <laughs>